everything without offending. So now my mouth is in the jailhouse with cases pending. First Amendment, you replaced it, rigged it, dubbed it down. It's not an option. Some of it I understand. SMT Nation, we back doing another round of testing of the Verizon 5G home internet. And we're keeping all things the same. We're just changing the time of day. All right, so you got yourself your Samsung Galaxy S22 to the left, connected to the Verizon 5G home internet there. And then you have the iPhone 14 Pro Max, also connected to the same Wi-Fi connection, Verizon 5G home. And then the Google Pixel 7, same spots, same setups, all in the same connection. And we're testing it at, what time is it? 9.16 in the PM, January 9th, time and date of this recording. All right, so we're gonna start with, um, we're gonna start with the Pixel, I guess. And we're gonna do Ookla testing on all devices. And then after the Ookla testing, we'll do fast.com to test over the Netflix servers. And then, what do we wanna do here? We'll do some multi-device testing simultaneous. And then, and perf, I forgot to do that. And then we'll do some 4K playback too. All right, so the Google Pixel is wrapping up this test. And once it's done, I'll start the iPhone test. And then we'll read off the, the metrics here. Okay, so the Pixel just finished. We'll start the iPhone. There you go. All right, so the Google Pixel 7. 202 downlink, 11 uplink. 50 millisecond ping, 983 on the download loaded ping, 584 on the upload loaded ping, and a three jitter. I right, remember the promised high-end performance metric expectation is 300 down and 20 up. All right, so we're close enough, I guess. It usually ranges between 250 and 300, and it looks like we're pretty close for the downlink and then the uplink is a little bit short here. That seems to be the hard part actually. All right, the iPhone's done. Let's go ahead and get the Galaxy started there. All right, so that's going. All right, on the iPhone, 225 down, 871, 8.71 uplink. We got a 35 ping, we got a three jitter. 914 download loaded ping, 1122 upload loaded ping. And then here's your Galaxy as it's wrapping up. 235 down. And the uplink, it looks a little bit skimpy. Yeah, just like the iPhone and the Pixel, looks like. All right, so 234, 235 down, 11 up, 29 ping. There we go. Two jitter, 763 loaded download ping, and then 1916 loaded upload ping. All right, things might get kind of tough here. Let's go ahead and do the two devices simultaneous. We'll do the Pixel and the iPhone at the same time. Let's we'll see if they can, how, how they split bandwidth here. Interesting, this is now the second video in a row where even though I started the Pixel first, the iPhone took a big chunk of the available capacity. Okay, so noticeable. Right, definitely uh, <laughs> pretty substantial difference there. Okay, so the Pixel coming in at 72 down and like not even one meg up. Wow, yeah, 0.89. And then the iPhone came in at 141 down and about eight up. Okay, let's do the Galaxy and then the iPhone. See if it's any different. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? All right, we got a ping spike on the iPhone, pretty noticeable. All right, so the Galaxy S22 came in with a 30 ping. The iPhone came in with a 305 ping. Because they're trying to test at the same time. 183 down on the Galaxy, we got about four. Oh, we got a little bit of a spike there. Uplink's about nine, eight, nine megabits there. Ends with about eight megabits there for the Galaxy. Then the iPhone's about 201 on the down. And what do we got here? Yeah, now it's running the uplink by itself. Uh, looks like the uplink is a major problem when it comes to the fixed wireless access. The downlink speeds are perfectly fine and usable, 
the trouble is with the uplink. Let's go ahead and test them all at the same time. So we got them all going, if you guys can see. Yep, they're all in frame. So we went Pixel, iPhone, and Galaxy. All three pulling at the same time. This is a tough test. <laughs> Alright, Pixel's getting about 59 down. iPhone's got about 148 down. Galaxy got 34 down. Very little uplink to go around, folks. Ooh wee. Yeah, quite the noticeable drop off uplink. One and a half uplink. Six uplink on the on the iPhone. One and a half on the Pixel, and we got about eight and a half on the Galaxy uplink. The the tough part here. Let's hit the Netflix servers. Uh, let's go ahead and do fast.com. We'll run that. We'll do that first on the Pixel. And then we'll do the iPhone, and then we'll do the Galaxy, and then we'll run 4K, and then we'll do an nperf. I haven't done an nperf test in a while. All right, that looks good. 230 down on the Netflix server for the Pixel. Let's try the iPhone. Oops, what am I doing? I got to get to the end. Fast.com. And then I think this is probably still running that uplink test over there. And I had the same problem on the last video that I recorded. The iPhoneFest.com was being kind of trouble. Mm. This one too. Weird, I never really had many problems, noticeable issues with Fest.com. I might have to delete the app and then reinstall it. See if that makes a difference. It might. It's not performing well. Come on. You guys been having problems with Fast.com lately? Maybe it's just a me thing. Maybe it's the app. Maybe it's the phone. Maybe it's the connection. I have no clue. Download looks good. Downloads at like 170. All right, let's go ahead and the Fast.com on the Galaxy. All right, so we had 230 down on the Pixel, 170 down on the iPhone, and Galaxy's 43, 63. All right, now we got a little surge, 220 plus, 230. All right, so that's cool. No trouble there. Let's hit the end perf. All right, we're doing the end perf on the Google Pixel 7 first. Uh, All right, you will see down at the bottom, you get your system information, you get your network, you get your provider, you get your technology, it tells you it's over Wi-Fi, and we're gonna do the full test. And that full test will do a speed test, and then it does like video playback and then browsing. I'll fast forward through all this so you guys don't have to sit around and wait too long. All right, so the Pixel just finished. I'm gonna go ahead and start the iPhone. You guys will see all the numbers and metrics and connections and everything is the same. So that started, we can go over the results from the Pixel. All right, 262 download with an average of 212, 18 upload with an average of 13, a latency of 48 with an average of 77. We got a browsing score of 75%. It looks like the zoom was the problem there. Streaming came in at 94% with a total endpoint score of 103,000. That's actually just fine. It's pretty good. Uh, not much better than that on most tests. The zoom test continues to be a nightmare and brings down the browsing scores pretty much for any carrier. All right, so I got the, uh, got the iPhone going. Let's fast forward. All right, so the iPhone just finished. I'll go ahead and start the Galaxy while we do the metrics for the iPhone test. You'll see we're still on the Verizon wireless home internet connection. All right, so the, uh... wait a minute, got a spike, that's weird. 
That's interesting. Look at this spike from the Verizon Home Internet. 471 down with a 226 average. 18 up with an 8 average. 45 ping with an average of 51. Interesting. Uh, browsing came in a little bit better than the Pixel. Came in at almost 77%. Uh, but the streaming came in just slightly lower at 92.7. Not all that different, right? Here's the two compared. All right, uh, total endpoint score on the iPhone of 102, 102,000, almost 103,000. They're basically the same. All that's left is the Galaxy to finish. And we'll fast forward through this. All right, the Galaxy just finished, and we have an endpoint score of 102,000, 224 down with a 131 average, 26 up with a 15 average, 49 ping with an average of 59. 81.32 on the browsing with a 96 streaming. So that one actually had the best browsing and streaming performance, uh, but it had the lowest downlink speed, so I think that's what brought down the score. Anyways, those, those are all great. Those are all fine. I don't see any trouble with anything. They're all sufficiently, you know, adequate and useful and good. Really, the only trouble we saw today was the uplink on the Ookla. Everything else seemed to be working fine. And uh, I don't really see any trouble with those metrics. I think all that's really left for us to do, folks, is just go ahead and run the 4K streams. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just put together the uh, setup for the 4K videos. I'll pick my YouTube videos play them all at the same time and see how it handles. All right, folks, so we got the same video playing on all three screens and you know, they, they default to these lower resolutions. So I'm going to set them all to 2160. And so this, <laughs> this one was set to 480. This one was set to 720. We're going to put them all to 4k, the 2160 as high as we can get it. Galaxy was on 480. All right, so they're all on uh, 4K now. Turn up the brightness a little bit. And we're looking for the spinny wheel of death to see if it buffers. Uh, but I think we're okay because I'm looking here. And if you guys can see the little progress bar, you'll see it working ahead a little bit. So it's not going to buffer this one. Yeah, it's working ahead too. And this one is working out as well. So they're not going to buffer. They're adequately pushing all the throughput and capacity that's needed for these connections. You'll see it's undisrupted. It is continuous. And it's not going to falter. Uh, we can, just like we did in the last video, we can even set these things to 2x. Make it even harder. And it won't be an issue. So we got us three simultaneous 4K streams on the same connection. So we got the 4K and then um, playback speed at 2X, making it uh, having to work even more. And you'll see it is chugging along, loading and keeping ahead. See how it does that little surge? Looking ahead. Nope, it's not gonna buffer. This one, nope, not gonna buffer. This one? Nope, not gonna buffer. They're all working ahead and working just fine. Chugging along, three 4K streams. You guys saw the testing on the NPerf, you saw the fast.com, everything there. What do you guys think of the testing? How is the Verizon 5G home internet performing? Again, we're trying to test that every time of the day, see if there's gonna be an issue. So far, we really haven't seen it, generally speaking. The only trouble, in this particular testing on the Ookla seemed to be the uplink, but everything else seemed to be fine. And of course, measuring a good network, not really Ookla, you know, um, I don't think Ookla is indicative of anything. I mean, it's a good proxy of available capacity, but that's probably it. Cause when it came to real world usage, no trouble here. It seems to be working just fine. Uh, but again, the uplink could be an issue for some, um, but I think for most users, it was probably fine and would go unnoticed. I don't think it would have been much trouble given all those different situations. But what do you guys think? Comment down below. With all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation, let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more, and turn on the bell notification icon to never miss an upload. Links in the description for all things going on with the channel. 
Big shout out to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters for making content on this channel possible. Thank you all so much, y'all the goats. We shall see you all in the next video. Peace.